But first, we are witnessing one of the strangest seasons we've ever seen. The Padres, after amassing some of the game's biggest stars, are on the verge of elimination. They pushed big at the deadline last year, pushed big in the offseason, vaulting to number three in payroll. But it has not worked on the field. It's important to note, though, this is not the worst team money can buy. It's more complicated than that. Let's do a little digging in. The worst team money can buy was the 1992 Mets. A famous book on that. John Harper, author. That club had misjudged and overrated players, buying big names and not getting the production from a mostly aging group of disgruntled characters. A club with Bobby Bonilla, Eddie Murray, and a stacked rotation somehow lost 90 games. The Padres are not that club. In fact, in many ways, the Padres individually did not underperform. Here's what I said about the Padres when they got off to a fairly slow start. This was in late June on this show. Start at the Padres. In hitting, weighted runs created plus. They're 13th. In ERA plus, they're eighth. That's pitching. Defense, defensive runs saved. They're fifth. Now, that's mostly from ha Sung Kim and Fernando Tatis, but they are fifth. So, overall, you're like... That's a pretty good club. They should be fine. I stand by my statement. You saw I was doing the Malays clubs there. I had the Mets and the Cardinals up there now. Now we'll just do Padres. I, I remain reasonably surprised, by the way. Here's why. Padres ranks in the National League in the main category. Same thing. ERA second. Hitting. That's weighted runs created plus. Third. Base running runs. BSR. They're seventh. Defensive runs saved. That's defense. They're fifth. Again, that's out of 15 clubs in the National League. They're above league average. So again, number two in pitching, number three in hitting, okay and everything else. This club should be fine. Almost every club that produces like this in the history of baseball has been fine. I'm not going to go over everybody's individual numbers. Manny Machado was hurt, but he played and he hit a bit. Hassan Kim had a great year. Blake Snell had a great year. New guys, Michael Waka, Seth Lugo, they were very good. But something happened to this club. So let's again go back in time. June 16th, 2022, last year. The Padres are 17 games over 500 and lead the NL West. They lead the Dodgers. No Soto, no Tatis, no Hader. It's Manny Machado and a bunch of guys grinding out at bats night after night. Now, maybe that club doesn't hang with the Dodgers all the way through the season, but it was at the time. Flash forward to early August, right after the trade deadline last year. Padres, look at them, playing the Rockies at home. The place is electric, packed house. Juan Soto, Josh Bell, Brandon Drury, all put in the middle of the lineup. They acquired all three. Josh Hader had already been acquired. He's in the bullpen to close. It's a coronation. The place is jumping, and everybody's thinking and saying, this team is about to take over baseball. But it didn't happen. They've played 212 games since that series, and they are a 500 team. 106 and 106. They did beat the Mets and the Dodgers in the playoffs. That did happen. That counts. But the greater truth lies in the larger sample. This super team has not won. And normally, I would explain this that you're looking at right now to happenstance, timing, and luck. Look, I, I brought this to baseball. It's an inexplicable, though. 0-12 in extra innings, 7-23 in and one-run games. That's the second worst record in one-run games ever. So normally you're saying, come on, man, that's bad luck. It can't happen again. But I'm sorry, if you're watching them, you know better. They routinely lose the same way. Base running and fielding miscues, a small lead that's not increased, one bad bullpen outing, and it's a close loss. This isn't just bad luck. No team has ever had a plus 94 run differential and not had a winning record at the end of the year. It's never happened. The Padres are doing that right now. So something in their team dynamic is not right. Look, Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig didn't speak to each other for long stretches of time. The late 70s Yankees had fist fights in their clubhouse. They still managed to win championships. It's not about everybody being best friends, but there is something to team play in what is otherwise seemingly an individual sport. The game Monday night spoke volumes. In a final must-win game, the Padres lost with about the best closer in the game in the bullpen. It's not about assessing blame in this situation. I don't want to beat up on Josh Hader. But somewhere between the manager, the player, upper-level management, and the agent, maybe, something went very wrong. For some reason, they couldn't go to Josh Hader. He wants to protect his arm. I get it. He's going to be a free agent. He does deserve to not be overworked. All fine, except clearly not everyone is rowing in the same direction. And the Hader thing is just one example. Big stars were brought in to a good club. Something was lost. Something was renounced. And it hasn't worked since. If you have a better idea, please let A.J. Preller and the Padres know.